chemical bonding, which is uh, which has been covered mostly maybe in the, your uh, general chemistry course. So in chemical bonding, you have a type of bonding that are, for example, ionic, covalent, hydrogen bonding, etc. Bonding. But here uh, in organic chemistry, mostly we would be focusing on covalent bond. This is because most of the the bonding that exists in organic compounds is mainly a covalent bond. As you know, covalent bond is sharing of electrons, sharing of electrons between atoms. So the bond that is being formed is shared between uh, two atoms. So this is just a review of what you already knew. But in organic compounds, there is what we call a loose structure, for example, a concept where you would account for the electrons that are involved actually in making the bond in that compound. For example, if we take methane, which is a CH4, uh, it's a molecule, it's a small uh, organic material. So carbon and there are four hydrogens. In drawing a loose structure, you need to always know what is the central atom. The central atom here is carbon. So when you draw a loose structure, you identify a central atom and you will ask yourself, the central atom, carbon, how many valence electrons does it have? As you know from your general chemistry, one is two to s Two p two p two, which are four electrons on carbon. So the valence electrons that are involved in the covalent bonding are four electrons of the carbon, which are found in a two s two and two p two. So you just put those four electrons. This is one electron, another electron, two, three, four electrons. So those are the valence electrons that would make the bond. So usually, or in most cases, or almost always, hydrogen has only one valence electron. It is a 1s1, if you remember. Obviously, you would remember that. So hydrogen would come with it is one hydrogen, uh, one electron, I mean. So to make the bond, there should be four of this to make a bond around carbon to make the molecule. So let's just do that. Hydrogen with its one electron, the second hydrogen with one electron, one electron here, one electron here. Now you have a compound with its loose structure. What is the most important rule you need to remember in loose structure is that the central atom should satisfy an octet rule. An octet rule means that there should be eight electrons around the atom. Eight electrons. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight electrons. That is called the octet rule. So when you draw and you are asked to draw a loose structure, you need to remember the octet rule does the central atom has eight electrons around it? That is a question you need to verify. So now it's a complete loose structure. So in most cases, the loose structure can be also denoted as a stick uh, drawing of carbon. This one single bond is representing two electrons. Remember that? Another one, another one, another one. So that is equivalent to this, but the loose structure shows each electron as a dot. So this is a stick structure for methane. So uh, next I will show you not all electrons are involved in bonding. So these electrons are called bonding electrons. Bonding electrons. 
So, uh, in, in another structure, if I give you an example of another structure for that, it would be, for example, metal amine. You don't have to remember now the compound name, but this is an organic compound which has carbon and nitrogen. This carbon and nitrogen can be central atoms in the bonding. Therefore, if you have carbon which has a 1s2 to s2 four valence electrons, it could be depicted as this. But for nitrogen, which is next to carbon, you have to have remember always hydrogen cannot be bonded more than two electrons around it. So it cannot be a central atom. Don't put hydrogen as a central atom. That would be a violation of the octet rule because uh, the hydrogen can only accommodate, the orbital for hydrogen accommodates only a maximum of two electrons. Therefore, it cannot sit inside at the center. Now, the other one would be nitrogen. Nitrogen is a 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. That means 2 plus 3, that is 5 electrons that are involved in nitrogen. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now it is getting closer to the loose structure we want. Therefore now I have three hydrogens with three electrons that can come here. So if you have hydrogen with one of its electron here, with one of its electron here, with one of ele its electron here, with one of its electron here, the loose structures seem to be complete because we are asked NH2, there are two hydrogens, there are three hydrogens, so the number of atoms is okay and carbon and nitrogen are occupying a space, but this also has, of course, one hydrogen. Now, let's count if octet rule is satisfied. Here, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Around carbon, there are eight electrons, therefore the octet rule is satisfied. Let's count for nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still now, the nitrogen is also satisfied. The only difference you need to remember in this case would be uh, how many of them are bonding electrons and how many are just lone pairs. So to do that, we'll be drawing just a stick structure for this. If I draw a stick structure for methylamine, it would look like C, H, 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 and lone pair, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this structure has one, two, three, four, five, six bond pairs, bonding electrons, bonding, because they make the bond. They are bonding electrons. But there are electrons that are not participating in the bonding. These are called lone pairs. Lone pairs. Even though they are not participating in the bonding, you will see them in the future that lone pairs also are important in the reactivity of the compound. Therefore, it is very important for you to know where the lone pairs are, where the bonding pairs are, and so on. And I will also give you one more example of the valence electrons for another compound. The other compound I want to give you as an example, and you should really focus on how it looks like. For example, I have CH3Cl. This is metal chloride. So if I were to draw a, a loose structure for this, I have to know exactly what would be the central atom. Obviously, carbon and chlorine have to be bonded, and hydrogen should be at the periphery. So I have carbon with 
four valence electrons. And chlorine, if you remember chlorine, it's in uh, group seven. Therefore, there is seven valence electrons around chlorine. So you can check that in your periodic table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So chlorine has seven valence electrons. And you should always remember the chlorine, the fluorine, the bromine, the iodines, they cannot be central atoms. They cannot be bonded more than two electrons around them. Therefore, now chlorine come as a whole by itself here through this electron, this particular electron, it, chlorine comes and makes a bond. Okay, chlorine. Two, 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 two. This is how it looks like. And I have three hydrogens. The three hydrogens cannot come here to make it a three. Cannot only can come to make a, a, a pair, to make a bond, always is a pair of electrons. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now, the structure is complete. Now, the checkup for this would be, is octet rule satisfied? Now, let's see if octet rule is satisfied. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for carbon, and carbon is good. Let's check for chlorine. Chlorine with its slow pairs, as I already discussed, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Chlorine also is satisfied. It has eight electrons around it, and we say the octet rule is satisfied. Now, if we were to identify or write a stick structure for this, it would be carbon at center, hydrogen containing two pairs of electrons, hydrogen, chlorine with lone pairs. So now, if I were to identify how many pairs of bonding electrons and how many pairs of lone pairs are there. Okay, how many pairs of bonding? Bonding pairs, bonding pairs. There are four bonding pairs, right? And there are lone pairs. How many pairs? Three pairs of lone pairs. These are lone pairs of electrons, lone pairs, and there are four bond pairs. These are the electrons that are not participating in bonding. These are the, uh, the electrons that are participating in bonding. Four bonding pairs is eight electrons. Three lone pairs pairs are six as electrons, eight electrons. So this is how it looks like when you write a loose structure. Remember, as a review, you should find what is a central atom, and you should find what is the valence electrons that are available for bonding for that central atom, and therefore you could arrange the bonding by not violating octet rule. The central atoms should have eight electrons around them. Hydrogen and the halides cannot make more than two electrons or two, a pair of bonding electrons around them, but they can occupy, they can hold lone pairs. Hydrogen actually cannot have more than two electrons around it. That means it can only make a single bond. The chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine also make single bonds. So in the next uh, session, we'll see what is a multiple bonding. Okay, in the last section, we have just seen loose structures and how bonding happens. But mostly bonding are also not uh, single bonds. There are multiple bonding in organic compounds. So uh, let's review what our multiple bonds are. Let's start with the same compound I have given you earlier, which is uh, the methane, or uh, just uh, most of them, or almost all of them are single bonds. So carbon, two electrons, 
two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, hydrogen. All of this are in a stick model. If you just look at the structure, they are all single bonds. So, in, in, uh, in the next example, what I want to show you is how do you make uh, a, a multiple bonding between atoms. Like I said, this would not be a good example to make a double bond because hydrogen cannot make a double bond. A double bond needs four electrons and hydrogen is not able to accommodate four electrons. So I will give you another compound, which is, for example, C2. H6, for example, so uh, or C2H4 as an example. So C2H4 is a compound, an organic compound that has two carbons. Therefore, the two carbons necessarily are bonded through a bonding type, through a covalent bond. So let's just put the two carbons. Carbon one with its four electrons around it, another carbon with its four electrons around it. You have this, so you have one, two, three, four, that's four electrons, four electrons. So when you make bonding, there are four, four hydrogens that can be accommodated in this structure. That means you have hydrogen, you have hydrogen, that is one, two, three, four, so another hydrogen. This is from previous, that is hydrogen. So now we have, uh, w we have, for the four, hydro four hydrogens, to accommodate four hydrogen, my mistake here, the hydrogen, one would be here, one would be here. So the, let's say they have four hydrogens in total, well, that's what we have in the structure. Now these two electrons cannot just sit here, but they can be used to making a bond. Like I said, carbon can make f uh, multiple bonding because it can accommodate more than four electrons, six electrons as well. So if you just have two electrons participating in the bonding, let's count if loose structure or the octet rule is satisfied. One, two, obviously there is one here, one here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For this carbon, the octet is satisfied. Let's see for this carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we have made a multiple bonding, obviously, here because the bonding, all of these are bonding pairs, but this is a single bond, this is a single bond, this is a single bond, this is a single bond. What you see right here is a double bond. If you just do the stick form of that, it would be C, double bond to C, because one bond, one single bond makes out of two electrons, but I have four of them. Therefore, there is a double one here, and there is one hydrogen, there is one hydrogen, there is one hydrogen, there is one hydrogen. So this is C2H4. The chemical formula here, the loose structure and the stick model, they are all the same. Now, this is called a double bond. So we are discussing multiple bonding. Remember, it's multiple, multiple bonding. It's not only sigma bonds that can be formed, but you can have multiple bonds with uh, atoms such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, but not with hydrogen. Hydrogen cannot have multiple bonding. Hydrogen can have only single bond. Now, let's do another molecule, C2H2, it's called acetylene. You have C2H2, and if you were to draw a loose structure for this, you have carbon, obviously, 
another carbon, obviously. Let's make it that way. But there are two hydrogens that can come with two electrons. Okay, let's just put them one on this side and one on the other side. So we have all this. But now the octet rule, uh, to satisfy the, the octet rule around it, or to satisfy as a stable molecule, now these two electrons, these two electrons, which are now depicted as lone, they are no more lone pairs, lone electrons, but they can make a bond like this, so that the molecule would be stable. And if you just look at this one and that one, they can come and form this bond. Actually, now carbon carbon bond is a triple bond actually. The bond between two carbons is a triple bond. Still the hydrogens are single bonds. This is a triple bond. Triple bond. So if you just have, this is their sluice structure, this is just the chemical formula, this is a stick model of the organic compounds listed. So here all oh, everything is a single bond. Here there are single bonds. How many single bonds? One, two, three, four single bonds and one double bond. Here there are four single bonds. Here there are a triple bond, a triple bond and two uh, single bonds. If we were to rank the length and the strength of these bonds, always remember single bonds are weaker than double bond and weaker than even triple bond. Therefore, in, the, in terms of strengths, this carbon-carbon triple bond is very strong and hard to break. The carbon-carbon bond is the second strong bond. The carbon-hydrogen single bond, or if you have a carbon-carbon single bond like this in this compound, uh, let's say, of course, I have to satisfy octet rule. This is another compound. If you just look at that, and if somebody asks you, what is the carbon-carbon bond strength? Single bond is weaker than double bond, carbon-carbon bond, and weaker than triple-triple bond. So, in terms of strengths to break, so the reason why I'm bringing this at this point is, when you do chemical reactions in the future, in all of your organic courses, you should remember that carbon-carbon single bond is weaker than carbon-carbon double bond and carbon-carbon double bond is weaker than carbon-carbon triple bond. How about in terms of lengths? The bond length between carbon-carbon bond is much longer than the carbon-carbon double bond. The carbon-carbon double bond length is much longer than the carbon-carbon triple bond. Therefore, the carbon-carbon triple bond is the shortest and the strongest bond. So, in the next session, I will show you electronegativity. You have maybe have done in your general chemistry uh, the atoms, electronegativity difference and dipole moment but I will show you how it would apply and it would be very important for you to remember the electronegativity of different atoms when they are bonded into organic compounds. So we'll, re we'll review that section next. So uh, continuing our discussion on organic compounds and their uh, polarity or uh, the dipole moments that exist in molecules, I will show you some examples so that uh, it would help you as a review of what probably you might know in uh, electronegativity differences. For example, if you just see a hydrogen-hydrogen uh, bond, it's just a simple hydrogen gas which has shared two electrons, it's a covalent bond because they have shared two electrons, 
The dipole moment for this, because the electronegativity difference between these two is it cancels out. So this dipole moment goes to that way and that way. So the dipole moment, that's how we measure uh, polarity, dipole moment, is zero. Therefore, this has no polarity in it. This, uh, it's, this is a polar covalent cancels out and there is no significant dipole moment. Before we proceed, I want to tell you that in your periodic table, as you go from left to right, the electronegativity of the atoms increase. And there is an electronegativity scale I want to just list down as values. For example, electronegativity, electronegativity scale, the scale for electronegativity for hydrogen is 2.2 for carbon, 2.5. Fluorine is the most electronegative one, as you know, it's 4.0. And oxygen is 3.4. Nitrogen is 3.0, and so on. So these are important scales, at least uh, to remember, so that uh, when you do the organic uh, compounds evaluation, that would give you whether a certain compound is polar or non-polar. And let's make a compound, for example, if you have C2H4, it's, uh, it will help you also in reviewing what we have already covered. This compound should have a double bond in it, because if you have carbon here, you have four of those, another carbon, four, Hydrogen, of course, hydrogen comes with its electrons. Hydrogen. So there are these two electrons now, because four of the hydrogens are already taken the position of bonding. Therefore, the rest would be, they are not uh, just uh, wandering like this. The most important or stable configuration would be for them to pair up and make a double bond. So this compound has a double bond and the stick form of this looks like carbon, carbon, double bond, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So if we evaluate the, the dipole moment for this compound, for example, between these two carbons, the, the dipole moment would cancel out because this is 2.5, this is 2.5, so this bond, actually that particular bond, does not have any dipole moment, right? Because it would cancel. That is the dipole moment is taking away electrons that way, and the dipole moment is taking away that way. So therefore, the, between carbon carbon, there is no any innate uh, dipole moment. Here, this is a dipole moment is zero. So it's a zero dipole moment. But if you just take between carbon and hydrogen, there is a slight dipole moment you can see because carbon is looks like more electronegative than hydrogen. Therefore, the direction of the dipole moment is actually the electrons are going toward this carbon. Even though it's not very big, this is zero, the carbon-carbon dipole moment is zero, but for this one there is a slight, between carbon-hydrogen, there is a slight dipole moment of about 0.3, right? So that is a little polarity, it shows a polarity, but nonetheless, overall, this compound would be without a dipole moment, because if you just look at here, here, and here, and here, all of the dipole moments, this would cancel out, and that would cancel out. So overall, this compound doesn't have any net dipole moment. Therefore, it remains as a polar covalent, a non-polar covalent bonding. So there is no, as, as such, any significant uh, polarity to this compound. But let's take another compound, CH3Cl. 
This is methyl chloride. Let's draw, as a review, let's draw a loose structure for this as well. I have a carbon. I have this carbon with four of them. Three hydrogens should come there. One, one, three hydrogens. But the chlorine should be bonded through this. That means, if you remember, chlorine has seven valence electrons, so it remains like this. So it doesn't matter where you put them, but now, if you were to check the octet rule, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you check octet rule for chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So octet is fine, everything is okay as a loose structure. Now let's evaluate the dipole moment. Let's draw the stick form of this. Chlorine, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Don't forget, just to put so that you have a, a, a long pair of electrons, three long pairs on chlorine. Now, if you just evaluate the dipole moment for this, you have that way, no, actually it's towards carbon because carbon is more electronegative as compared to hydrogen. So it is like this, it is like this. Now they would cancel out. So this dipole moment would be up here towards carbon. But here the dipole moment between carbon and chlorine is, if you just look at this, Chlorine would be the most electronegative next to fluorine. Therefore, the dipole moment actually is significant, very high, high dipole moment towards that. So this compound is a polar covalent bond. It is a polar covalent bond because there is innate gain of dipole moment. Even though these ones are canceling out, but in this direction where the chlorine is the most electronegative atom between carbon, which has only 2.5, but fluorine has 4, so I, I believe chlorine should be close to 3.5, 3.7. Therefore, there is a net dipole moment toward this chlorine. So most of the electron density, actually, most of the electrons are withdrawn toward this chlorine. So chlorine would have a sigma negative, and carbon would be a sigma positive. What it means is the electron density is pulled towards chlorine and more chlorine is more chlorine, more negative and carbon becomes, since the electron is being withdrawn from it, it has a sigma plus charge. That means it's more positive now because of the presence of chlorine. So dipole moment, actually, understanding dipole moment helps you whether a compound is polar, non-polar, polar covalent, where, the, where is the electron deficiency or where is the electron density. For example, here, chlorine has the most uh, electronegative density, and here, carbon doesn't have that much electron density because most of the electrons are being pulled towards chlorine. So it is very important for you to understand uh, the electronegativity, polarity, and the type of bonding that exists. For example, if you remember, this is a, a, a polar covalent bond where electrons are shared, but the electron density around them is varies based on the electronegativity of the atom that is attached to it. Now, if if you are just uh, to see to compare it with sodium chloride, sodium chloride is formed from loss of electron from sodium and gain of electron on chlorine. This is ionic compound, completely different uh, kind of bonding. This is ionic bonding. So we don't encounter this mostly in organic compounds. Our compounds mostly they don't show a complete loss of electron and a, share, a complete gain of electron. Actually they are a sharing of electron that's why 
This is ionic bonding, which is very different from what we did in organic compounds. In the next session, I will show you about formal charges. These are not formal charges because they just show a qualitative way of where the positivity is existing or where the negative uh, electron density is localized. But in formal charges, it's a calculation where it shows you what charge is an atom is carrying in a compound. Continuing our discussion on the review of uh, some organic chemistry concepts, uh, today I will also show you about formal charges. So when a compound has, it, uh, overall, it might be zero. There, there might not be a net uh, charge to it, but sometimes you would be asked if there is any formal charge for each atom in the compound. For example, if you have CH4 again, our usual example, CH4, which is methane, you have a carbon. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to show you uh, the structure again, so that you don't forget. And the stick model. So, if I ask you what is the formal charge on carbon, as just when look at, looking at it, there is no charge, there is nothing on it, on a carbon, right now. So, what is the formal charge? You would say it is zero. And if you have, for example, uh, a, a compound where you have CH3 and H4, something like this, and I ask you what is the charge on a nitrogen and what is the charge on carbon. So what is the formal charge for carbon and for nitrogen? You need to, have to identify now using a formula where formal charge is, formal charge is equal to the group number or the valence electrons of that atom, group number or I call it valence electrons also would work valence electrons minus uh, minus uh, non-bonding electrons non-bonding electrons electrons and minus half of the bonding electrons so the formula is you have a group number or where that atom is, the valence electrons or where that atom would be, minus the non-bonding electrons, which meant to be lone pairs, which we have discussed, and minus half of the bonding electrons. So let's apply that to this compound. So the formal charge for carbon we are just dealing, when you are asked formal charge, it is specific to the atom. So what is the formal charge on carbon? Okay, formal charge on carbon equals to valence electrons on carbon is four, or it is in group four in the periodic table. Four minus the non-bonding electrons. You don't see anything non-bonding on carbon, right? There is no any non-bonding electrons, so it is zero. Minus half of the bonding electrons is half of how many bonding electrons are around carbon? Eight of them. Therefore, the formal charge on carbon is zero, which we have already identified it as zero. So formal charge is calculated as the valence electrons, you should remember where that uh, atom is or how many electrons are valence and you should know what are the bonding and the non-bonding electrons. It is very simple and all of you should be able to calculate this very easily. So let me do another example which is this metal ammonium salt. It is a salt that means I'm inferring there is a charge. So if you just take four carbon and I will ask you what is the formal charge on carbon, what is the formal charge on nitrogen. So you need to have carbon, 
carbon is formal charge on carbon e equals the group number is four there are no electrons if you just draw the stick four of this which is so now if you just look at this uh, you have one two three four that is four of the hydrogens and this is uh, the bonding between carbon and nitrogen okay let's see this as as a neutral molecule it has already violated an octet rule but the fact that i am suggesting a formal charge it might be because it might is containing a charge that's why it is existing like this so four minus lone pairs is zero on carbon nothing on it and half of the bonding which is eight again formal charge on carbon is zero now what is the formal charge on nitrogen formal charge on nitrogen equals five is where it is or five is the valence electrons what nitrogen has and if you just look at uh, the the bonding between this you have four of this uh, so what are the number of bonding one two three four five five bonding electrons means ten of them minus there is no lone pair zero but there are 10 electrons around it so the formal charge on this actually should come to one uh, but i'm sure maybe i have used uh, one two three four methylamine oh okay okay uh, uh sorry uh, I am wrong here, it should be three. So there should be only three of them. So the question should be, what is the formal charge for this? So with three hydrogens, sorry. So if you just calculate for this, there are six of them. Uh, one, two, three, four, which is eight. Eight electrons are bonding electrons. So five minus four is a plus one. Therefore, this structure has to be actually written as the correct structure for this is CH, H, H, nitrogen with its charge on it, with three hydrogen. This is written because I'm just asking you, I, I haven't written the charge here, but that's how normally it should come that way. So, so since it was a question, that's why I wrote it like this. So this structure is not right. So the formal charge on nitrogen is plus one. The formal charge on carbon is zero. So I will also give you another example for formal charge. For example, if you were to take an example of with oxygen, let's say you have this CH3O H2. What is the formal charge on oxygen? Now, let's see how first uh, the stick structure looks like. Carbon, obviously, if it is bonded to four of them, by now you would know the formal charge on it is zero. But let's see what is on oxygen. The formal charge on carbon is zero. But what is on oxygen? On oxygen, the formal charge is equal to oxygen is group six or it has six valence electrons looking at this actually i should give you this as well looking at this uh, you have one pair of lone pairs that is two electrons as non-bonding electrons here in the formula non-bonding so two and minus how many bonding around it so you have uh, one two three which is six electrons half of six is three 
So the formal charge on oxygen is 6 minus 2 minus 3. So 6 minus 2 is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. So you should write this structure as a plus 1. So the formal charge is a plus 1. Or usually we don't write plus 1, but that's how it should be written. So this compound right here, protonated uh, methanol, it's protonated because we added one more hydrogen. That's why it got a plus. So you need to exercise this formal charge business. And the formula is simple. Um, as a review, formal charge is equal to the group number or you can say the valence electrons number minus the non-bonding electrons minus half of the bonding electrons. Half of the bonding electrons. So these are the examples that shows you what a formal charge is. A formal charge can be also negative. So, for example, I can show you a, a negative formal charge in the next section. C H C H two C H three. If you just look at here, all of them, uh, all of the carbons, the octet rule is satisfied. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of them carbons, if you just count, the formal, uh, the, uh, the octet rule is satisfied. For example, for this, the formal charge would be, the valence electrons is 4, there are no bonding electrons, and half of the bonding electrons is 4, because there are 8 of them. So this has a formal charge of, it is a 0 formal charge. And this one is also a zero formal charge. This is a zero formal charge. But remember, this one looks a little different. So let's calculate what the formal charge would be for this carbon. So the formal charge for that particular carbon is, let's say, this is group four, obviously. It's carbon. It's uh, in valence electrons are four minus Non-bonding electrons are, two of them are non-bonding because there is no bond to them. And half of the bonding, one, two, three, four, five, six, half of six. So when we calculate this, this is minus two and that is minus three. Four minus five, it is a minus one. So this should have a negative charge on it. So the formal charge is negative 1. So that means it has to have minus 1 as a charge. So formal charge can be negative, can be positive. It can be more than 1 as well. It can be plus 2, it can be uh, minus 2 as well. So remember to exercise this, this would be a summary of a formal charge calculation.